Welcome to the 2024 Women's Economic Opportunity Conference. My name is Fauna Hurley and I serve as the business liaison in Senator Welch's office. And I have truly enjoyed working with so many partners in creating this day. Before we begin, kindly silence your cell phones and please refrain from filming our keynote speaker. You may be tempted, she's quite charming. First, I'd like to thank Vermont State University for hosting this event. Hillary Linehan, there she is, has gone above and beyond in helping this day run smoothly. Thank you, Hillary. Heather Ganya, where is Heather? with the Vermont Small Business Development Center has been an essential part of this conference for nearly two decades and has helped facilitate the transition from Senator Leahy's office to our office. And change can be hard, but Heather has made it much smoother. Thank you again, Heather. The WEOC Planning Committee helped plan this day, solicit and select workshops, and promoted this event with a zero dollar marketing budget. So, <laughs> yay! So somehow, you all heard about this conference, and you came, and it's thanks to the WEOC Planning Committee. So if you're on the Planning Committee, please stand up. Thank you. And thank you to our workshop and panel presenters who have volunteered their time and talents to share with you today. Please stand up, workshop and panel presenters. Many of them are doing both things, so thank you. Um, thank you to my colleagues in the Vermont office of Senator Welch. We are here to help with any questions you may have throughout the day. We also have a casework table um, in the back. I lost my, I lost my spot. Um, if you have any questions or issues about any particular federal matters, um, we also have internships available in the fall and the spring. So come talk to us if you might be interested or know someone who might be interested. Senator Welch, staff, please stand up or wave. Yay! And thank you to our AI panel presenters. AI and the future of work will be a full group panel right here this afternoon. We'll have afternoon coffee to carry us through the day, and this will be an interactive, engaging panel with time for questions. After our speaking program, please head to your first workshop that begins at 10.15. Most are in Green Hall, which is behind this building. One is adjacent in Conant Hall, next door. Lunch will be provided in Maury Hall, and after lunch, please head back here to meet with exhibitors and network with coffee and dessert. Plan to head to your afternoon workshops at 1.30 and be back here for the AI panel at 2.45. We will also draw names from our raffle. If you haven't had a chance to enter, you can enter at our registration desk back here, and we will draw names from the raffle at the end of the panel. Finally, we could not put this event together without the fiscal sponsorship from our partners at the Vermont Community Foundation and the Vermont Women's Fund. Thank you to Emily Bush, the Executive Director of the Vermont Women's Fund. Emily. <laughs> Emily joined this endeavor about halfway through and hit the ground running. I would also like to sincerely thank Stacey Fagan with the Vermont Community Foundation for helping create this new partnership with WEOC. The Vermont Community Foundation plays an essential role in our communities across the state. And with that, it is now my privilege to invite Stacey Fagan from the Vermont Community Foundation up to say a few words. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? It's a great pleasure to be with you uh, on this beautiful summer day. Thank you to Senator Welch and to Fauna Hurley and your entire team for your service to Vermont 
and for your leadership in continuing this important convening that was envisioned and brought to life by Senator Patrick and Marcel Leahy. I'm Stacy Fagan, Vice President for Philanthropy at the Vermont Community Foundation. And along with the Vermont Women's Fund, we are very proud fiscal sponsors of the Women's Economic Opportunity Conference. But please also join me in thanking the rest of our event sponsors for today, who are noted in the back of your program. Their generous financial support makes today's conference possible. Please join me in a round of applause for them. As Fauna noted, Emily Bush is our new executive director of the Vermont Women's Fund, and she's here with us today. I hope you'll take a moment to meet her. She joined us in February and um, has made a, a tremendous impact already in her leadership, and we're excited for her uh, to make her mark uh, with the Vermont Women's Fund. So uh, please welcome Emily and, uh, and take a moment to get to know her today. The Vermont Community Foundation has served as home and as a partner to the Women's Fund since its inception more than 30 years ago. For our role as grant makers, as advisors, as leaders, is to help women and girls envision the very best for themselves and to ensure their dreams are also reality. It's critical that the opportunity for women and girls is available in every corner of our society which is one of the reasons why convening in this venue with all of you today is so important. Nurturing community that is in relationship and in solidarity with women and girls is essential. This is where dreams become real. Economic opportunity, well-being, and a leadership voice for women and girls must be more than possible. It must be assured. Thank you for committing your day to learn and grow together. Now, I have the distinct honor of introducing a woman who has made a profound impact on Vermont, but certainly women and girls across our state. Through her service in the Vermont Senate, as a middle school teacher, a rock climbing instructor, a college professor, and a columnist for the Brattleboro Reformer. She is a former Vermont Senate pro tem, a mother, ally, and also the first female to serve Vermont in the United States Congress. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Becca Bailey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very, very happy to be here with all of you. And I want to say it is um, a real honor for me to be able to serve alongside um, Senator Welch, who's here um, with his wife, Margaret. I didn't want to forget to tell you, as, as a woman leader, it's really important that we find our, our mentors and supporters wherever we can. And I just want to take this moment to say, Senator Welch, uh, when he was a congressman, was uh, such an important uh, mentor to me, and he, he saw leadership in me that in moments I didn't necessarily see in myself. He encouraged me to run for majority leader. He encouraged me to run for president pro tem. And I just want everybody to know that, that sometimes, you know, you have to see it reflected back from other people. So, um, Senator Welsh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So as others have said, I think it's really important that we acknowledge that uh, former Senator Patrick Leahy and Marcel were instrumental in bringing this into being. So 25 years later, here we are because of the vision that they had. So um, once again, thank you so much to them for understanding the need for this in the state. I also want to thank, once again, people who have said it, they thanked uh, Senator Welch's staff, but I can tell you as a new member of Congress, <laughs> We couldn't get anything done without our staff, okay? So once again, thank you so much for all, all that you did. So in my new role as Congresswoman, I think a lot about leadership and the kind of impact that I wanna have and the kind of person that I wanna be. And leadership, I have come to understand 
in a very deep way. It's not about how how we as members of Congress necessarily show up every day, though that is important, that I want us to think about what is the leadership that we are able to demonstrate in our organizations, in our businesses, in our communities, regardless of whether you have an official title, right? We all have impact every single day, and we can either acknowledge that we have that impact or pretend that we don't, but we're having it. Okay, some is intentional, some is unintentional. So what I want us to think about today is what kind of impact do each of you want to have? And how do you use the position that you have to have positive impact on the people around you? So we have impact each day, every day, all day long. We can either lean in and engage with people around us or we can choose to check out. And these moments can happen in an elevator. They can happen when you're meeting with your staff in the morning. Um, people are watching us all the time and getting cues from us about how we show up as people in the world. So positive impact is built in tiny little moments, tiny gestures. They're rarely built in these grand gestures. Like we all love when Oprah is given away, you know, we do, we love it. We love when she's given away the stuff or someone shows up and, you know, we get to cut the ribbon and have the big check. You know, those are some of the, the fun moments for our staff. But really, people are watching us each day to see how do you interact day in and day out. So, I serve in Congress. I can tell you uh, that I don't see a lot of empathy and compassion day in and day out. And I, I've spoken with both Senator Welch and Senator Sanders about when they were in Congress. And they have said to me, what I am experiencing is next level. It's, it's worse than they'd ever seen before. So many of the people that I serve with, I refer to them as conflict entrepreneurs. <laughs> I didn't coin that term, but it is spot on. It is every day, how do I drive the fear, the anger, the frustration? I don't actually want to solve a problem, I just want to make it on Twitter or the evening news, right? It's driving conflict and fear. And they take up a lot of space. They really do, they make a lot of noise. And they make many of us, and what I mean that is writ large across the country, they make many of us doubt that real leadership exists anymore in our elected officials. And this flawed kind of leadership, this anger, this fear, this resentment, is not just happening in Congress right now, though that is a very public representation of that. It's happening, unfortunately, across our country right now, and it's trickling down into Vermont. So when I get discouraged by this dynamic, um, I'm a nerd, <laughs> I go and I read research to find out what's happening here. And there is a book written by um, a professor at the University of, of California, his name is Dr. Keltner, and he studies power, and he studies how power interacts in groups. And one of the things um, that he talks about in his book, The Power Paradox, he shows that the, the traits that bring people to us, that give people trust in us as leaders, are the very traits that we lose the more power and influence we gain. So let me break it down for you. The skills and practices, the traits that bring people to us, and the research shows it, I mean, we know this intuitively, we know this, but the research shows it too. Empathy, generosity, gratitude, and being able to tell compelling stories about you, your team, and what you're trying to do in the world. Those are the things that give people confidence in you, that draw people to you. And again, not just as a very public leader like me, but in your organizations, in your businesses, in your communities, okay? And the research also shows if you want to have lasting impact, not the clickbait, not the headline, but lasting impact, positive impact, you have to focus your work on other people, always. 
That has to be the center of the work that you do day in and day out, in public moments and in those quiet moments when you don't know if anyone's watching you. You have to show enthusiasm for other people's ideas. You have to treat people with dignity and kindness. You have to be curious about the ideas that people are bringing to you on your team and not assume that you know better because you are in a position of power. I don't have to tell you, we have a very skewed vision in this country about what leadership looks like. Real leadership is not brash, it's not rude, it's not the mean boss who's the most effective. Over the long term, the most effective leaders are the people who cultivate leadership in the people around them. Again, to be constantly focused on other people. Now, you wouldn't know that from what makes the news all the time. But again, are we talking about long-term impact? Are we talking about positive impact on the people around us? Or are we just talking about going viral? So we have been fooled into believing this narrative of the cutthroat, cutthroat boss. So as I said, here's the paradox. Even if you have that true sense, that compassion, empathy, generosity, curiosity are those things that lead to better leadership, you must be vigilant when you get any kind of power and influence to make sure that you don't lose those qualities. Because those are the first things to go. So, my charge to all of you, in whatever role that you play, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's a for-profit, whether you're um, the head of a very small business, whether you are trying to figure out the kind of influence that you want to have in your community, you got to stay focused on others, you got to stay curious, and you have to constantly be checking yourself and saying, am I day in and day out focusing on the people around me? That's my message. That's my message. We, we individually make the difference. We make the difference. There aren't some other people that are gonna come and save us from ourselves. We have to do it. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful conference. I hope you learn not just from the workshops that are put on and the roundtables, but that you work on really making deep and lasting connections from the people around you. I want you to approach the day that there is so much knowledge in this room that you're just going to try to seek out, like a sponge, all the information and new perspectives that you can from the people in this room. So thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for inviting me. And it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Senator Peter Welch, who has been an incredible public servant to the state of Vermont and the nation. Senator Welch. You know, it is, it is true that I encouraged uh, this extraordinary woman uh, from Wyndham County to run for majority leader and then President Pro Tem. And I have a question. Was I right or what? <laughs> and that was, a, that, was, uh, that was, I love listening uh, to your remarks, Becca, because, uh, you know, it, there's an interesting moment here. Everyone here is ambitious. And you gotta work hard and embrace your ambition. And to get from where you are to where you wanna be uh, is a climb. And it doesn't matter if it's, you wanna be in Congress, you wanna start your own business, and you gotta work hard, you gotta compete, you gotta live with the insecurity that all of us have about whether we can do it, whether we're worthy, whether we'll be taken seriously. Uh, and sometimes in those moments of anxiety, 
uh, where you have to make a decision to throw an elbow or make a gesture of kindness. That's a decision that we make every day. And what I find so important about us being together is the mutual support that we give one another. It can help us make that gesture of generosity as opposed to that elbow of competition. And you can get to where you wanna go, but how you get there really makes a difference. Will you, when you get to that successful point you were aiming for, be the kind of leader that Becca was just describing? Which I think in our heart is where we'd all like to be. Uh, and by the way, it's very powerful. Just think about moments when you were a little insecure and somebody with who you acknowledged or felt had authority was generous to you, acknowledged you, and how much better you felt. So uh, Becca's words, I think, really, really make sense. And what's so tremendous about this conference, because uh, I used to come many times uh, when Patrick and Marcel, of course, were doing this, was seeing people here who had these goals and ambitions, came here to get some skills, negotiating skills, let's say, uh, and to provide mutual reinforcement and support to move ahead. So that's what the goal is today. And, you know, it's more important than ever. If you look at what's happened, the last 15 years, let's say. There's a lot of areas where <clears throat> women are in more leadership positions. So if you look by the numbers, you can say, hey, we've been making progress. But if you haven't noticed, and I know all of you have here, the pushback on women's rights is unbelievable. And it's being sanctioned by the highest court in the land. So the need for solidarity, for coming together, for standing up for your rights, individually and collectively is more important than ever. So I just want to express my gratitude to everyone who's here uh, to carry on that tradition of mutual support, disciplined learning, but that commitment to generosity as you, 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 you walk that path to achieving your dream.